the longest documented lava lake of Mauna Loa was in fact 148 years ago this month, uh, April of 1873, an 18-month uh, lava lake that was sustained on the summit of Mauna Loa. It was the longest one that we know of that's continuous. Uh, now, people were not up there all the time, and sometimes it's really hard to tell if there's activity from Hilo or from the top of Mauna Kea if you're lucky to get a better view. So 18 months for sure, vigorous enough that with no doubt it was it was fountaining enough and filling the lake and f lighting up the sky that, that it was confirmed from all around and Quite likely uh, it went on longer. There were times people went up there. We'll read you the account of Isabella Bird here that, that they went up there and it seemed like there was no glow coming and they thought they wouldn't see anything, but they get up there and there's a giant lava lake in full effect. The USGS notes that that eruption might have lasted as long as four and a half years of continuous level activity. 1841 was really the first uh, survey of Mauna Loa, shown here by the Wilkes Expedition. 1841, Mokua Veo Veo is the summit crater. And what's interesting is that you have a central depressed pit in the middle in here with a flat floor, which likely means recent lava flow, right? Um, and you have a bench in the north and then the north pit. And you have another bench in the south and then the south pit. And you can see some northeast rift zone activity. Northeast rift zone connects up in here. The southwest rift connects down over in this direction over here. Now that we've had a look at Kilauea recently and seen that summit caldera collapse, we can recognize that this these are all different elevation chunks of caldera collapse. Right? So we had some collapse that had a deeper middle in Mauna Loa, and as it was refilling, it was able to refill that bottom section first here. Right? But just like Kilauea has this down drop, down drop block, Mauna Loa has this down drop block here and here as well still in 1841 and today this is not visible anymore this has all been buried by lava flows since this time lava fill since 1841 here and how we had these blocks that were elevated before and since 1841 we've come and we've actually repaved filled in all that collapse feature so Mauna Loa has certainly been in a caldera refilling phase, right? refilling all the void from the collapse. And the collapse, uh, best guess, uh, uh, a thousand years ago or so, we've had a refilling for a while, and we've only refilled this inner pit. right? And of course, there might have been multiple collapses, of course, and smaller collapses and bigger collapses, and that's all, all hard to tell. The next survey was done in 1874 during the act of Lava Lake. Done by Lydgate. You notice this corner right in here. This is looking a little different. This is 1841 and then post-1841. Now that little knob that before went this way, it seems we've had some collapse in this area over here. And in fact, it's in this area that the lava comes back up and the lava lake forms. And so this is the main locus of a lot of activity for the next uh, century on Mauna Loa is out of this little corner down here in the bottom. Hard to know exactly you know, how accurate these sketches are, but Lydgate was a surveyor. And in fact, he actually shows this little knob right in here. And then I'm going to show you guys a second uh, sketch map here. And this one is from Hall, and I've got it sideways to start, just so I can emphasize. He also has this little knob right in here. Uh, Hall is drawn in the lake right over here. That's this little kidney bean section right in here. But uh, there was actually another shelf down over here in the southern part of the crater as well. And he's showing the, the lake in a smaller area, but feeding flows, overflows, that cover this whole bottom part of the crater here. And so there's a couple of different ways to think about how lava flows in Mauna Loa can make lava lakes. And one is the fact that they're just filling a big hole in the ground, not unlike Kilauea is doing now. And have an eruption in a big hole in the ground, it's going to fill it in, it, you can make a lava lake. In the end, there ended up being somewhere like 45 feet of of new lava covering the entire bottom of the pit here right but with as far as an open surface only a smaller open surface over here on one end of it right which is interesting it's not too dissimilar to what's happening in Kilauea now with a small lake in fact also by the west and a big crested over eastern part right that kind of struck me when i was looking at this here that's hall's sketch there and that's september um, 1873, so that's that's already uh, five months into the eruption. And show you guys a different version of Lydgate's sketch here. And uh, June 24th, 1874 is a date here. So he's 
noting in here where they camp, where the Wilkes group camped. So a pendulum point somewhere around in here. And there is that lava lake right in there. Right over here. It's got marked out that lower floor of the crater. In 1872, in August, there was a two-month eruption. It was kind of building up. Dr. Samuel Neeland, he says, From the center of a small cone with an apparent diameter of 200 feet, sprang a jet of molten lava not less than 300 feet high and about 100 feet in diameter. There was an opening in the northeast side of the cone from which flowed a river of lava, which gradually widened into a broad lake. And the other end of the lake took its course along the base of the precipice, which separates the north from the south side of the crater. The fiery fountain was a principal feature. Its roar was not unlike that of Niagara, but without the concussion and irregular booming sound of the Great Cataract. It's hard to conceive the energy of the forces which could keep this heavy molten column in perpetual suspension so many hundred feet high for several weeks. In the end, estimated maybe 60 days, two months or so of that eruption. It was back to action in 1973. Uh, in January, where uh, the herdsmen at Annapol describe the mountain, quote, constantly quivering like a boiling pot. It was really April 20th that activity came to light in full force uh, at the beginning of the 18-month sequence. The first reports, park rangers, uh, Reverend White, 150 feet, 300 feet high lava fountains out through the middle of there. And, um, by the middle of June, it was Isabella Bird and W.L. Green. They were on their way up, saw no, no glow, no reflection, and they were, quote, fearful of being disappointed. But within two miles of the crater, uh, they started hearing a roar, a roar like the ocean. And uh, coming across the, the, uh, to the rim of the crater, they see at the southwest end once again, same thing, right? Because people are coming up around here for the most part. And they see around here this fountain of fire, 150 feet broad playing in several united by independent jets to the height of 150 to 300 feet. At night, the lake was for the most part at white heat, and the surface was agitated with waves of white hot lava about the fountain at the center. Through the rest of the vast crater, the projecting ledges were thrown into bold relief by the reflected light, and by numerous dashes and lines of fire from apertures and crevices. She was arriving more around this time in June, when this whole bottom area is all covered in lava, right, and crusted over. It's some forming crust, but she's seen glow in a crack, and she's seen lava at the edges. At one time, the jets, after long playing at a height of 300 feet, suddenly became quite low, and for a few seconds there were cones of fire, wallowing in a sea of light. Then, with a roar like the sound of gathering waters, nearly the whole surface of the lake was lifted up by the action of some powerful internal force, and this whole radiant mass rose three times one glorious upward burst to a height as estimated by the surrounding cliffs of 600 feet. After this, the fountain played as before. They're talking about there, you know, the lava fountain shooting up through the lava lake and the waves coming from the edge. So her companion, uh, Mr. Green, he says, The form of the fountain would constantly vary, sometimes being in the shape of a low rounded dome, then perhaps forming a sort of spire in the center, with a fountain in the form of a wheat sheaf on each side. And showing you maps because that's really all there is for these these old uh, accounts. Now maybe we could show you, show you a little bit little bit of what happened afterwards right here. So now we're going to turn to USGS footage from Harold Stearns early on of Mauna Loa erupting, um, and this is in the 1930s. And these eruptions in 35 progressed down to the Northeast Rift after the summit phase. I'm showing you guys just the summit phase as a as a proxy for what it might have looked like, right? Forming a center cone and and lava pool in the middle and then feeding big flows out to the side here. Right? And you can see here this little bit of this crater edge still remaining on the southwest side here of, of Mokua Veo Veo, summit crater of Mauna Loa. And essentially because it is that closed crater, all the flows are, are if the eruption lasts long enough, you can form lava pond or a little lava lake kind of feature really, right? But really sustained lava lake like Kilauea had for a hundred years, that's not something we have seen. Mauna Loa. It's been these shorter ones, the 18-month one being really that the, the winner here. We're coming around the south side here. The summit would be up over here on the left. It's a very similar eruption site even in the 1930s as we had back in the uh, 1870s. And you can see the panorama in black and white and what it would have looked like here is view the southwest area with all the vents. Reverend Titus Cohn was a very important uh, historian in Hawaii at that time. He notes uh, in January 1873 that for nine months the action had not ceased. 
Its duration is marvelous, considering that it seems to be confined to the crater. A special brilliancy to it in January. Higher fountains, a larger open lake surface, that kind of thing, perhaps. October 6th that year says it's continued for 18 months, and that's the account where the 18 months of action really comes from.